So this is our fourth and final installment of our series called In Him, Timeless Truths for Times Like These. And today I'm going to be talking to you about um, timeless truths that are found in one of the most beloved hymns of all time. As a matter of fact, if you had most people, if they could only name one, this is the one they would name. And most people who have a favorite, this is definitely in their top five. This hymn is called Amazing Grace. And when I was thinking about God's amazing grace, I remember uh, specifically there was one time in my life when I could see God's amazing grace upon me in a way that was undeniable. And I thought I would share it with you. Um, in a previous career that I had before I was Pastor John, I was actually a car salesman. And um, I had become a car salesman in the days when the internet business of car sales was kind of just in its infancy. And because I was the youngest guy on staff, they uh, put me in charge of all the internet stuff and they thought that no one uh, would actually ever buy a car online. That sounds pretty funny in today's uh, day, in 2020, I think more cars may have been sold online this year than have been sold in person because of obvious reasons. But even before that, online sales had taken off. But uh, what I specialized in was selling cars online and delivering them to people off-site who had never even seen the car. And I had sold a car to a person who lived in downtown Detroit, and I was driving on my way downtown Detroit, and I was on the Lodge Freeway. You're probably, you may or may not be familiar with the Lodge Freeway, but it is a very busy expressway that is um, going toward or out, obviously away from downtown Detroit. But I was on the Lodge Freeway, and as I was driving, I was in congested traffic, which is normal for the Lodge Freeway, but you kind of set your cruise and you go and you assume everybody's going to do everything right. But um, a couple of vehicles in front of me was a bread truck, um, and uh, there was a motorcycle who was flying down the Lodge Freeway and was bobbing and weaving in and out of traffic and driving like a crazy person. But as the motorcycle scooted around the bread truck, the bread truck, he kind of cut it too close and the bread truck actually clipped the motorcycle and the bread truck, in order to keep from running over the motorcycle driver, actually ran into the wall in the embankment. And what I found myself in was a circle of cars that were smashing into one another. It was like a scene from, if you've ever seen a big crash at a NASCAR race where all these cars are piling up. But the crazy thing was, was in the middle of it, it seemed like everything was moving in slow motion to me. And this was a point in time when anyone who was a sane person, I've never been accused of that very often, um, of being a sane person would have probably just thrown up their hands and said, I'm going to die. But amazingly enough, I was in a brand new Dodge Grand Caravan, um, probably under a hundred miles on it, being driven to this customer's house who was obviously off site of the dealership. But I was in their brand new vehicle surrounded by cars and a motorcycle, of course, and trucks that are banging into each other in this huge pile up that's happening on the Lodge Freeway right before my eyes. And I never changed my cruise control and I drove straight through it, and though everything around me was crazy and smashing into each other, not a scratch was on that car, and God protected me through that whole thing. Um, and why is it that I want to talk about that? Because I want to talk about God's grace, and that is a perfect picture of grace. 
You know, I, I'm not saying that God loved me more than anybody else who was in that situation. I'm not saying any of that, but I am saying that God, even though everything around me was crazy and breaking and I'm sure there were people hurt in the accident. I didn't hear of anyone that died in the accident, but um, God brought me through it. I only didn't, I didn't only go through it. I seen everything that happened, but I went through it without a scratch on me. And I drove and I just kept driving. And I, I was at one of those points when I couldn't even think. I was speechless and thankful to the Lord because I knew it was like a hand of an angel directed me through that craziness. And that hand of the angel, that craziness that I was being directed to is a perfect picture of God's grace. You see, grace is power from God to do what we cannot do. Let's say that together. Grace is power from God to do what we cannot do. And so many times when we as Christians, and if you're watching this and you don't happen to be a believer or a Christian, thank you so much for joining us. But when you hear us talk about this thing called grace, it's usually related to that, you know, one day I'll die and I'll go to heaven and I was saved by God's grace. We don't think about the fact that God's grace is actually power from God to do what we cannot do. Yes, by going to heaven because we can't get there on our own, but also throughout life that in our normal everyday life that God shows up with his grace and his power in ways that we see and ways that we can't see to give us power to do what we cannot do. And last week we uh, sang another hymn, not Amazing Grace, but that song was called Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And that song opens up and the second line in that song had this line that said, tune my heart to sing thy grace. And the reason that that line is in that song and it's so important to us is we are wired as humans that it seems like we sing any song other than grace. The song of the typical person's heart is we sing a song. And when I say sing, maybe um, you're talking and not singing. But if I were to write it down into song lyrics, it would be most people spend their days complaining about everything that's wrong in their lives, everything that's wrong in the world, everything that's wrong. See, that's not singing the song of grace. You see, the song of grace recognizes what's wrong in the world but recognizes also the goodness of God in helping us overcome, go through, and triumph over all those things that are wrong in the world and wrong with our lives and wrong in traffic and whatever it is that may be wrong in your world. God shows up with grace, and sometimes it's grace to get through something unscathed, Sometimes it's grace to bear the pain of when it hurts. And with that, let's, let's read these words to the hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I love that it uses that word wretch. That might be my favorite word in the entire song of Amazing Grace. And here is why. It reminds me that no matter how much I see God's favor in my life, and I know that God loves me, and I know that God has saved me, I understand who I am without God. I am a wretch who needs saving 
in every situation. And this song reminds us that every moment in time is a time to remember to depend on God. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. You see, and when I, when I think about grace, uh, I think a lot of people have this thought in their mind that grace always has to look like I did in that brand new car, driving through a major traffic accident and coming out unscathed. But I know life isn't always that easy. I know things get hard. There are many seasons of your life and you may be in the middle of a season right now that's it's hard to go through. It's hard to see the end of this season. That you don't know what's gonna happen. And I know a lot of people around our country and even around the world are scared of what's coming. Different people have different fears. Some are fearing the results of the virus. Some are fearing economic collapse or government collapse, or you name it. There, there, there is plenty of fear to go around. But grace reminds us that even when it seems things are falling apart, they are in fact falling together. Let's say that, let's say that out loud. Let's get that into our spirits. Let, even when it seems things are falling apart, they are in fact falling together. So I believe God wants to remind us of this very truth that is written by the writer of Hebrews in chapter 416 about grace. It says, so let us come boldly to the, the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And, and I believe that that's exactly what God is calling us all to do right now, is to turn away from a lot of the noise that's out there that's leading us to fear and turn our hearts and our minds to him because he has promised us grace when we need it most. And I don't know about you, but surely this is when we need it most. And this leads us right into the next line of the hymn, Amazing Grace. Let's read that together. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. It's an interesting statement. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. I thought this whole grace thing was about being uh, over overcoming our fears. How is it that grace could teach my heart to fear? Well, it goes back to that line in the first verse. Where, we, where the song identifies us who sing this song as recognizing that we are a wretch. We are deserving of God's punishment, but instead he offers us mercy. The Bible says in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when we realize that he is the most powerful force in the universe, and he is the only one worthy of our fear because ultimately he is the one that controls our destiny. We understand that the very same principle of grace that teaches us the fear of the Lord also teaches us that we don't have to fear anything because God has this world 
under his control, no matter how out of control we may think it looks, we know that in the end, God wins. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul wrote it, and this is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, Romans 8, 28. Let's read. It says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And we know that God causes all things to work for good for those who love him. Just like I said earlier, even when it seems things are falling apart, they are in fact falling together. Even the things that we think is bad, God's going to use them to work for our good. And sometimes it's hard to believe when you're in the middle of it. When you're in the middle of a life that's collapsing around you. Maybe it's a health struggle for you or someone you love or a financial struggle for you or for someone you love. That or all the things that are going, around, going on in the world in 2020 that seem so out of control and it's impossible sometimes to see how God is going to work this for your good. It's in times like this that we have to be mindful not to be infected by a case of the ifs. Fear has a way of helping us see how everything bad can get worse. Um, the economy's bad, so if I lose my job, then I'll lose my house, then my family will be... It just, if has a way of rolling downhill and making us lose our hope, lose our trust, lose our faith in God, that we try working all things out for our good on our own instead of allowing God to work out all things for our good. And oftentimes when we try to fix things with the hand of our flesh, we end up actually messing things up. We are trying to take one step forward. We take 15 steps back because we tried to fix with our hand what the hand of God was already working behind the scenes for our good. And I'm not saying if we mess it up that God won't have grace and fix it. It'll, it'll just take longer. We'll actually live in that moment longer. So the, the idea for us as Christians is to figure out the part that God wants to play in our lives to work out his purposes. Because when we give our lives to the Lord, we've actually signed up that we're making our life to be about God's purposes. And if we're going to get infected by a case of the ifs, I think we should be infected by the case of the ifs in the opposite direction. Not of how if how bad, but if how good. And then we can begin to live in faith. Let's read Romans 8, 28 along with the verses after it. And I think you're going to see what I'm talking about. And we know that God causes everything to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. And what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? 
Let's say that out loud. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? So I want us to remember that when we find ourselves in difficulties as these days go forward, that if God is for us, who can ever be against us? And I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord with those words. And I want you to remember that even in the Bible, God's chosen, he would, he would choose one person out of a billion and still they had to go through difficulties. But all the while, God was working behind the scenes to work it out for their good. Do you, like the story of Joseph. Do you remember Joseph? From the book of Genesis chapters 37 through 50, Joseph had a dream that he was going to be um, the ruler over all of his brothers and his brothers didn't like that idea. So they threw him in a pit and left him for dead. But then they thought better of it and sold him into slavery. And then he went from slavery to prison. And he was supposed to get out of prison and didn't get out of prison and had to stay in prison even longer. And finally, he got out of prison. And it was after going through all of that that God raised Joseph to the second in command behind Pharaoh in all the land of Egypt and actually saved, God used Joseph to save the world and Egypt and all of his brothers from starvation because of a famine that was coming. But if all those bad things, God allowed them to happen because through God's grace, he was working out something for his good. And I, for one, am one that I believe that no matter what it is that I'm going through, that I constantly remind myself that God is working this for my good because I know that he loves me and I know that I'm called according to his purpose and that his grace surrounds me. His grace that empowers me to do what I cannot do. God's saying, I'll do what you cannot do. I'll take you places where you can't even see. I'll, I'll be in you more than you could possibly be. So in closing, each week I've tried to tie a, the hymn into a song because I want us to... Um, have the word of God planted in our hearts, just like the lyrics of these songs. And I think Amazing Grace could possibly call, be called the mother of all hymns. And if there is a psalm that might be called the mother of all psalms, you know, if there's one psalm that people know, if there's one hymn that people know, I think these two lend themselves together and we hear them often because both of them have such powerful truth that connect to each other, but more importantly, connect us to God, no matter what it is that's going on. And that Psalm is Psalm 23. Let's read verse one together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know, when thinking about amazing grace, and tuning our hearts to sing his grace, it's very important to understand the, the depth of what Psalm 23:1 means for us as followers of God. It means that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It means my heart's going to be tuned to the frequency of grace. I'm not going to be a person who goes around complaining about all the things that I don't have. But I want to go be a person that goes around praising for all the things that I do have. Because I want to remind you that the place that you currently hold as normal, though it may seem un mundane, though it may seem undesirable, though it may seem like a place that you don't want to be, 
there's someone else in the world who you are living in the middle of their miracle. Maybe you're complaining about the food that you have on your plate while they're begging God for food to eat today. It doesn't take much to look around the world and find someone who is less fortunate than you. This is a simple reminder that we live in grace. We're thankful for what we have while we're waiting for what will be. Next verse, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I want you to understand this picture that is in the head of, in the mind of David who wrote this song. He was a shepherd and he understood. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Can you imagine being in the middle of a desert? And, and you know, we think about green pastures that we're all in belly deep alfalfa and that we have everything that we want and everything that we need. But what it really means is that the, the area that you live in, it may be a complete desert all around you. You may, your life may feel like I felt that day driving in that car with things crashing to your left, things crashing to your right, things crashing in front of you, things crashing behind you. And it's hard to just keep going and trust God. But this verse reminds us that no matter what's going on around us, God has us. And he leadeth me beside the still waters. You see, all the waters that were around were not still. There was rivers with flowing rapids that if, if a person or a, or a sheep got close to that river, that the river could wash them away and they could be separated from their their shepherd, they could be drowned, but the shepherd always knew where the still waters are. So no matter what waters are raging, what seems like all around you, remember there are always still waters if you'll let him lead you. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Whatever it is that you're going through is no match for the God who is bringing you through it. Let's say that out loud. Whatever it is you are going through, is no match for the God who is bringing you through it. Seems like a good time to read the third verse of Amazing Grace. It says, Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's read the last verse of Amazing Grace. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. You know, often we think about this verse and we think about the day that we die, quite frankly, or the day that someone we loved has died. That, you know, those 10,000 years kind of begin on the day that you die. But I want to submit to you that 10,000 years does not begin the day you die, but the day that you finally 
begin to live. And that day can be today. Because when we understand how amazing God's grace is, that is when we begin to live by faith, to walk by faith, to proceed knowing that God is on our side in whatever it is that we do. And if you've experienced God's amazing grace at any point in your life, you know what it's like But if you don't know what that feels like, I ask you today to just, why don't you pray with me? And ask that by God's grace, you would be able to surrender your life to him and his plans for you. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so amazed by your grace that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for us while we were undeserving while we were still sinners you sent him to die on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins and he was raised from the dead so that through him we might have access to your power and your grace. And Lord, I pray that every person here, that as a community of believers, we would once again in this moment surrender our lives to you, knowing that you have our lives in your hands. And we say, Lord, help us to be grateful. Help us to be amazed by your grace. Help us to live surrendered to your plan for our lives. Because we believe that God is for us. So nothing can possibly be against us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you would like to support the Florence Church, please go to thefloricechurch.com and click the tab that says giving. Obviously, we're going to close with a song today and you can probably guess what it is. Let's all sing Amazing Grace. God bless you. Thanks for joining.